Hello and welcome back to your Geography Lessons Year 7. We are into week 3 of our development topic. So we've looked at what development is and we've looked at how we measure it. And from those things we know that different countries have different levels of development. But we didn't start that way. So this week we're looking at how does a country's development change over time? So this is your reminder to have a pen and paper ready and we are going to go into our lesson. Okay, so once again, I want us to have a little think back to the work we did last week, whichever task you picked, and think about the different measures of development we looked at. If you could only choose one, to use for the rest of your life the only way you measure development is through this one measure i want you to pick one write down which one it would be and why you think that so pause this video write down which development measure you would use and why okay good so a little reminder of the measures of development we looked at we looked at gni which was gross national income we looked at hdi which was human development index we looked at life expectancy and some of us looked at donkeys or another kind of measure so thinking about that if you can only pick one i'd love to know send me your answers which one you picked and why okay so now that we can measure development and we know what development is we're going to think about how development changes over time so for this week, I'm just going to take you back to Dollar Street and a little reminder that we are looking at different levels of income. And in this case, we're looking at it in terms of housing. So I want us to think about how did we get from that first house there, which lots of people would have lived in hundreds of years ago, that low income house all the way up to that more expensive um, house that we would recognise. It looks more like the houses we live in to an extent. Um, so how do we get from that first picture to the last picture? Okay, in history, uh, you either will have or will be learning about the Industrial Revolution. And just a reminder, that's the move from things being done by hand, so farming being all done by hand, to things being done by machines. So now we have ploughs and other equipment we use to farm that makes it much quicker. And that in turn, so all these job changes, caused people to move from the countryside to the city where there were more jobs. There were jobs in factories, there were lots of different jobs that weren't working on the farm, which is a lot of what people used to have to do. So it changed the types of jobs we do as well and the types of industries we worked in. And if you do task four, this is something you're going to focus on. So we have primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary industries. Task three is going to focus on the importance of the machinery and invention to development. And that one's going to start with the washing machine. OK, so most developed countries have moved away from jobs like farming, where you or any job where you produce raw material and they've moved past manufacturing so they've taken the factories and they've outsourced them now and they work in the sectors we call quaternary and tertiary and they are jobs like teaching would be a tertiary job their jobs around providing a service teachers doctors engineers or their research and development based jobs they're finding new things it's being a university researcher there's loads of jobs within them some that i probably haven't even thought of didn't know existed but those are the kinds of jobs we do more now than we do the other jobs so the uk moved from being primary and secondary based so agriculture and manufacturing through to tertiary and quaternary and we did that over a really long period of time as did other countries that we currently consider developed germany france those sort of countries a couple of hundred years ago were still farming industrial revolution and now we're over here in tertiary and quaternary the countries that we consider to be developing are moving through these stages much much quicker so they have better access to the global inventions that came from the industrial revolution they have ideas and so china for example used to have 60 percent of people working in the primary sector in 1990 and in 24 years that's moved to being only 28 percent which if we have a look on the screen we can see the pie chart that shows us that so that is China now in 2014, whereas in 1990, they had 60% in the primary sector. So that took the UK almost 200 years to move from that level of primary to what we have now. 
Um, there's a group of countries that are moving through these stages really rapidly known as BRICS. And if you do task one, that is what you'll be focusing on. So here, just for comparison, I've popped up the UK in 2011. And as you can see, our primary is 1% now and our biggest sector is tertiary. So industry is a way that we can watch how countries have developed over time. OK, so that was a nice quick introduction to how development changes over time, framing it in the view of industry and how industries change. So for task one this week, if you choose to do task one, you will need the worksheet that will be on class charts. As you can see, it is all about the BRICS countries. So you will find out what the BRICS countries are. You'll use the worksheet to rank them in terms of which is more developed, which is sort of the leader of the BRICS countries. And then in no more than 100 words, you are going to assess how developed the BRICS countries are. So to do that, you might need to look back at a country we consider more developed, like the UK, the USA, for comparison. But hopefully you'll have that information from last week. OK, if you're going to do task two, you're going to follow that link and it will take us to the Gapminder website, which is still the people that do Don Street. But this time we're looking at a slightly different part of it. So if you click that link, it will bring you to this website here. And to animate this, you just need to press the play button. That will cause the little bubbles you can see to move along the years. It starts in 1800 and it ends in 2019. So it's pretty up to date. I have chosen the UK and China for you to look at, and we're looking at their GDP, which is gross domestic product, is very similar to GNI, and it measures the income of a country. So we're tracking the UK and China's income growth over those 219 years. Now, what I want you to think about when you are describing their growth is the rate at which they grew. Did one grow quicker than the other? Did one have slow growth and then rapid? Was one steady? Then I want you to think about, did they start off in the same place? And if they didn't, what's the difference? Which one has grown more? So you can find that out by taking the 1800 figure from the current figure, and that will give you the difference. Then why doesn't the graph go further back than 1800? Why do we not have information from before then? If we did, do you think we would see different patterns of growth? So 1800 was around the Industrial Revolution. If we went back to before then, what would they look like in comparison? So China used to have the Silk Road. That was a big trading route that went from China through to Europe. That would have brought them lots of income. So there's potentially a bit of history we're missing where actually China was more developed than the UK. So I want you to describe the graph and I want you to think about some of those factors that sit outside of what we can see that might influence it. OK, so that is task two. And then on to task three, there is a video that Hans Rosling, who made the Gapminder website and an excellent book called Factfulness, has made about the washing machine and the first time his family got a washing machine and the importance of washing machines and other inventions for development. So then you are going to, having watched that video, pick five inventions that helped the UK develop. You can tell me what they are, pop them on the timeline and say which you think was the most important and why. And you can use page 128 to 129 to help you. But what I don't want you to do is just copy it. OK, so five things, five inventions, machines, other things that helped the UK develop, put them on a timeline and then say which you think was the most important and why. And finally, task four. So I've already talked a little bit about primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. But what I want you to do is define those four industries and include an example of the type of job you would find in that sector. So primary might be farming. OK, so you would say what is primary industry and the kind of job you would find there. Then you if you're going to have a go at the challenge, you're going to explain what the mix of jobs is like in a less developed and more developed country. So like those pie charts I showed you earlier, you're going to say what percentage is what sector. And you can again use page 128 to 129 to help. If you are having a go at the challenge, an extra level of challenge, try not to use the UK or China, which were the examples I used in the PowerPoint. OK, so. 
that is all of the four tasks. If you've got any further questions, please don't hesitate to email your teacher. You can email me if you want, but your teacher will also know what they're doing. And they are the ones you're going to send your work to. So hopefully we feel like we're now ready to answer the question, how does development change over time? Good luck, Year 7, and I will see you next week.